Oh, most people have a kind of a preset. When you go to Revelation, you go, oh, we know what you're going to talk about, you know, the disasters. But do most of us remember what directly precedes God's launch of the tribulation? Remember, God launches the tribulation. It doesn't happen. God launches it. And, and we're seeing it this morning. In verse 2 is the launch. It, it's almost like the first missile going out, sent from heaven toward the earth. Well, the way that Jesus and the Apostle Paul and the Apostle John and the Old Testament prophet Daniel all describe the start of the tribulation is not with disasters, wars, famines, earthquakes, or pestilences. The tribulation begins, according to the Bible, with global peace and prosperity and safety. Now that... I mean, that just doesn't sound like, you know, the late great planet Earth fair. We're so used to the gloom and doom. But actually, as we'll see this morning, even though for decade after decade, we in Christ Church have been well taught about the inexorable slide our world is heading in toward that final war, toward the final Holocaust, Armageddon and all the apocalyptic events associated with it are part of secular media. I mean, we hear that all the, all the time. In fact, now the Weather Channel has picked up on it. Now they call the storms we went through this past winter Snowmageddon. Los Angeles calls their traffic Carmageddon. All of that is because the biblical metaphors are in society. We hear regularly about the dangers of nuclear war, of bioterrorism, of pollution, and global warming. It seems like every day we're seeing more and more of what the Bible talks about. It seems like our world is plunging deeper into chaos. There, there are more ethnic conflicts. Uh, there are greater horrific acts of terrorism and aggression. And it seems like there are more and more natural disasters. And so God's word warns us that plagues and quakes and famines are all part of the tribulation. But what we really need to see from the Bible is, and we need the scriptures to guide us because the Lord sent this to us so we would know. And we need to answer the question from God's word, which comes first, global peace or global holocaust? And you already know the answer because Jesus and Paul and Daniel and right here in Revelation, John, tell us that what comes first is global peace and prosperity. That's what's next for planet Earth on God's schedule. Well, is Earth sliding straight down the slope to fiery destruction and demon hordes and solar scorchings and the Holocaust described in Revelation? In other words, will the things get darker and darker and disasters just keep amplifying until the tribulation bursts into view? Well, the answer from God's word might surprise us. Because what the Lord says is, ultimately all those disasters are gonna hit. But temporarily, in the short term, God says we are headed toward a time of unprecedented prosperity and peace is coming our way. And although all those prophesied disasters are coming, God explains that just prior to the tribulation, our world will experience the peace and safety and the prosperity and harmony that mankind has only dreamed of for centuries. And just before the very worst time in history, our world may well see the best times that humans have enjoyed since the Garden of Eden. That's Revelation 6.2. And it reminds us this morning that peace and safety, the cry of all humans for over the past 6,000 years since the fall of humanity into sin is gonna finally come. But it's only temporary. And it's gonna be shattered so quickly by the worst times the world has ever known. So there is coming in a day not too much in the distant future when a Superman is gonna rise and he's not gonna be in the theaters, and he's not gonna need special effects. And this Superman is going to amaze everyone, and to everyone's grateful surprise, he will at last bring to earth the peace and safety they've longed for. And that's the first element of the tribulation that God introduces us to, and that's Revelation 6. Mm -hmm.